Welcome to the Astronomy 95 channel and this is the NASA Top Stories Episode 5. In this episode, we talk about surprise clues of watery past in Mars, atmospheric waves experiments environment tests, AI to design NASA mission hardware, NASA's satellites help with Turkey, Syria earthquake response and more top stories of NASA. The crucial space environment tests for NASA's atmospheric waves experiment have been completed successfully. The mission's main goal is to comprehend gravity waves in the ionosphere, thermosphere, and mesosphere system, which is the region of Earth's atmosphere between 50 and 500 kilometers in height. Scientists will be able to learn from the data gathered by atmospheric waves experiment how terrestrial weather affects the ionosphere, which can interfere with satellite communication, as well as the mechanics and features of atmospheric gravity waves. To make sure it doesn't generate or emit electromagnetic signals that may interfere with other equipment on board the space station, the Atmospheric Waves Experiment Instrument underwent vibration testing on a shaker table and electromagnetic compatibility testing. To ensure that the instrument satisfies the mission's criteria and to show its capabilities and constraints under operating circumstances, engineers calibrated the whole system. At Utah State University in Logan, Atmospheric Waves Experiment is headed by Michael Taylor and the Explorers Program Office at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, manages it. The equipment is being built by the Space Dynamics Laboratory of Utah State University, which will also supply the mission control facility. Saturn has four seasons like Earth because of its tilted axis. However, due to Saturn's far bigger orbit, each season lasts around seven Earth years. When the summer or winter solstices of Saturn are approaching, the spokes vanish. The spokes are projected to become more noticeable and detectable as the fall equinox of Saturn's northern hemisphere on May 6, 2025, approaches. Early in the 1980s, NASA's Voyager spacecraft made the first detection of the ring spokes. While NASA's Cassini probe was orbiting the gas giant planet for up-close exploration in 2009, Saturn's most recent equinox took place. Since the Voyager spacecraft had been long gone and Cassini's mission was ended in 2017, Hubble is carrying on the task of long-term monitoring of changes on Saturn and the other outer planets. While the other three gas giant planets in our solar system have ring systems as well, nothing compares to Saturn's distinctive rings, which serve as a laboratory for research on spoke phenomena. At this time, it is uncertain if spokes may or do exist at other ringed planets. For the time being, Simon added, it's a fascinating magic trick of nature we only witness on Saturn. In order to understand the spoke phenomena and what it tells about ring physics in general, scientists are eager to fit these parts together. As part of the agency's venture class acquisition of dedicated and rideshare launch services contract, NASA has given a task order to Blue Origin, LLC of Kent, Washington, to provide launch service for the agency's Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers mission. Escapade is scheduled to launch in late 2024 from Space Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida using Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket. Two identically tiny spacecraft will be used for the project, which will offer simultaneous two-point observations while studying the magnetosphere of Mars. A magnetometer for measuring magnetic fields, an electrostatic analyzer for monitoring ions and electrons, and a Langmuir probe for measuring plasma density and solar severe ultraviolet radiation will all be aboard the spacecraft. After departing Earth's orbit, it will take 11 months for the spacecraft to reach Mars, where they will spend several months correcting their orbits until they are in the optimal position to collect data on the magnetosphere. Scientists can better predict space weather, which may shield satellites and people as they circle Earth and explore the solar system, by studying various magnetospheres. Four payloads capable of higher risk, VADR offers FAA-licensed commercial launch services. These extremely flexible contracts contribute to broader access to space by lowering launch costs by adopting a lower degree of mission assurance and commercial best practices for launching rockets. Using commercially accessible AI software, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, has led the way in the creation of specialized, unique components. A computer-assisted design expert first sketches in the surfaces where the part links to the instrument or spaceship based on the needs of the mission. The AI then makes the connections, creating intricate structural designs in just one or two hours. The algorithms do, however, require a human sight. The Exoplanet Climate Infrared Telescope Project, a balloon-borne telescope designed to examine hot Jupiter-type exoplanets circling other stars, was built by Goddard physicist Peter Nagler with the aid of evolving structures. For the rear of the Excite telescope, 
where the IR receiver connected to a carbon fiber plate holding the primary mirror from a cryogenic chamber made of aluminum, McClelland developed a titanium scaffold. The mission's SUV-sized payload will be launched by a long-duration NASA super-pressure balloon, and an engineering test flight is already scheduled for the fall of 2023. In the autumn of last year, when NASA's Curiosity rover reached the sulfate-bearing unit, scientists believed they had seen the final indication that lakes previously covered this part of Mars. This is due to the fact that the rock strata here developed in drier environments than those found in earlier mission-explored locations. The team behind Curiosity was therefore taken aback when they found the most convincing proof of ancient lake waves yet for the expedition. Waves on a small lake's surface churned up silt at the lake's bottom millions of years ago, leaving rippling patterns in the rock. The rover has been climbing Mount Sharp's slopes since 2014. The three-mile-tall mountain was originally dotted with lakes and streams that would have offered a rich habitat for microbial life, assuming any ever developed on the Red Planet. Another hint to the past of Mars' prehistoric water may be seen well ahead of the marker band in a valley known as Gedeis Vallis. The valley was created by wind, but it also has a channel that begins higher up on Mount Sharp and is assumed to have been eroded by a tiny river. Scientists think wet landslides also happened in this area, pushing boulders and other debris the size of cars to the valley floor. It's obvious that the ensuing debris pile atop Mount Sharp is one of the more recent features since it rests on top of all the other strata in the valley. Last year, Curiosity saw this debris twice near Gedeis Vallis Ridge, but it could only see it distantly. And further marker band hint that has captured the team's interest is a peculiar rock texture that was probably brought on by some kind of cyclical pattern in the climate or weather, like dust storms. Rocks with layers that are uniform in their thickness and spacing are nearby the rippling textures. This type of rhythmic pattern in Earth's rock strata frequently results from atmospheric phenomena that take place at regular intervals. It's conceivable that comparable processes led to the rhythmic patterns in these Martian rocks, suggesting that the planet's past temperature may have changed. The name of the first asteroid that NASA's Lucy spacecraft encountered has been revealed. The minor main belt asteroid that Lucy will meet on November 1, 2023 has been given the name Dinkinish by the International Astronomical Union. The Ethiopian name for the human ancestor fossil, also known as Lucy, which was discovered there and is now housed there is Dinkinish, or an Amharic. The asteroid Dinkinish was assigned the provisional designation 1999 VD57 when it was originally found in 1999. After a few more years, when the orbit was sufficiently widely known, it received an official number. It went nameless, much like the vast majority of the millions of tiny asteroids in the main asteroid belt. The asteroid was chosen as a target by the Lucy team, and the team then suggested this new name in honor of Lucy's objective to investigate the remains of the early solar system. We are thrilled to have the chance to celebrate that link once more. Dinkinish has been added to Lucy's already jam-packed trip primarily so that the crew may test the groundbreaking terminal tracking technology, which is essential for accurate imagery during these fast contacts. Although the asteroid is smaller than half a mile in diameter, it is a great chance to test Lucy's systems before the mission's primary scientific objectives learning about the untouched Jupiter Trojan asteroids, which are essentially remnants of our early solar system are accomplished. Scientists on the mission are enthusiastic about what this little asteroid can tell us despite the fact that the primary goal of this encounter is to test the engineering. This will be the smallest main belt asteroid ever investigated, and in comparison to other main belt asteroids that have been explored in the past, it is considerably smaller than recent studies of near-Earth asteroids. Astronomers have learned more about our Sun thanks to NASA's Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array, which has detected high-energy X-rays released by the hotter components of the Sun's atmosphere. The Sun's outer atmosphere, known as the corona, reaches more than a million degrees, making it at least 100 times hotter than its surface. New SDAR's vision of the Sun, which was created from a mosaic of 25 photographs collected in June 2022, may help scientists understand why this is the case. Scientists have been perplexed by this because the Sun's radiation radiates outward from its center. Small outbursts called nanoflares cause material to become even hotter than the corona's typical temperature. The high-temperature material that is supposed to be created when several nanoflares take place close to one another can be detected by New Star. These observations were made when NASA's Parker Solar Probe, which is now making the closest approach to the sun of any spacecraft in recorded history, was making its 12th close pass. When scientists use New Star to make observations during one of Parker's perihelion flights, they may directly correlate distant activity data with samples the probe directly collected from the solar environment.
following the magnitude 7.8 and 7.5 earthquakes that occurred on February 6 in western Syria and southern Turkey, respectively, NASA is working to share its aerial images and data from space in a way that can help the region's relief and recovery workers as well as enhance its capacity to model and predict such events. Synthetic aperture radar is used to measure how the ground moves and the constructed landscape changes following this sort of occurrence, seeing Earth in all weather situations, day or night. A group of researchers from the Earth Observatory of Singapore and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California developed what is known as a damage proxy map for Turkey using images taken before and after the earthquake. Such maps are made available to a wide range of organizations, including the U.S. State Department, the California Seismic Safety Commission, Miyamoto Global Disaster Relief, and the World Bank, by members of NASA's Earth Science Applied Sciences Disasters Program Area and its national and international collaborators. Members of NASA contribute observations and maps via their disaster mapping portal in addition to actively participating in coordination calls organized by the U.S. Agency for International Development. In addition to evaluating damage, NASA scientists make use of ground and space-based observations to enhance the agency's comprehension of subsequent occurrences that arise as a result of the first natural disaster. Scientists can identify regions that may be more vulnerable to landslides by using data from the Commercial SmallSat Data Acquisition Program, which collects observations from commercial satellites to aid NASA's research objectives, as well as from NOAA and international space agencies in Europe and Japan.